the first step in this process is to actually make a uh, image of the stencil you'd like to create. Part of the magic of making this whole process work is actually using the right type of uh, paper to print on. Uh, and today we're going to be using uh, the backing uh, that these mailing labels here come on. Um, these are Avery inkjet uh, mailing labels. Okay, you can now see by the considerable mess we've removed all of the labels from the paper. Uh, we are going to be printing uh, on the shiny side of the paper that the labels were attached to today. So hopefully uh, after you print you'll get something like this. Okay, so this is what we're going to actually uh, uh, use to make our stencil out of. Uh, it's copper, uh, and it is about five thousandths of an inch thick. That's uh, 0 0.005 inches thick. Uh, I got it from a local hobby shop. Uh, you can probably find it at most larger hobby shops, uh, or you can probably get something similar online from, from McMaster Car. So I've cut the uh, piece of paper with our stencil on it down to size a bit. And uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to cut out a nice, clean little piece of copper, uh, which is a little larger than the, uh, than the stencil actually is going to be. OK, there. So that's, that's about right. Um, you can see that this is a little bit, uh, the, the copper is a little bit larger than the sheet, but not by much. Uh, copper of this thickness can be cut uh, pretty easily. I use some shears here, uh, but you can probably really use just regular scissors also. Okay, so then a lot of prep work here. Uh, I've both rubbed it down uh, with some very fine grit sandpaper, and then I've uh, kind of cleaned up the mess from that uh, using some isopropyl alcohol. Okay, so I've got my uh, handy dandy uh, iron here. Uh, I've cranked it all the way up and let it get nice and hot. And I've also got a phone book, which I'm using in lieu of an ironing board because I'm a single guy and I don't have an ironing board. Uh, however, I do have the iron. So now we're going to preheat the copper. Uh, by applying the iron to it, just leaving it there for maybe 20 seconds or so. And the purpose of this is is to get that, that copper nice and smoking hot. So when we apply uh, the paper with the stencil on it, it'll, it'll stick right away. OK, so this is probably uh, one of the trickier portions of the process here. Um, now that the board is nice and smoking hot, the copper is nice all, all nice and hot, we are going to hopefully smoothly and carefully apply the stencil paper in one go. And the reason this is so critical is since the board is hot, it's going to stick right away. So you need to kind of just get it perfectly lined up and just make it go for it. And uh, when it's on there, go ahead and take the iron and uh, apply some uh, heat and pressure. And uh, we're very much in process now. We're kind of past the point of no return. Um, so. Uh, basically, the next step is to continue doing this for maybe three to four minutes or so, and really just try to apply pressure to every last little section uh, of the stencil over the copper. And after you've done kind of an initial sweep, what I find works really well is you take like, the tip of the iron and go back and forth over every little section here. So just kind of keep doing this for a little while, and uh, uh, then we'll get to the next step. Okay, so after you've been uh, after you've been uh, getting this guy all nice and heated up and hopefully transferred for a while, what you can do is take the corner and slowly start to lift it up. And hopefully, what you'll see, like in this case here, uh, is you've gotten really good transfer. And we'll take a minute here and uh, zoom in on this. So hopefully, you can see maybe a little bit. I'll take my word for it; it's transferring pretty well in this case. Um, but let's say you're not getting good transfer. Uh, the nice thing is since everything's kind of nice and stuck together, you can just slip that paper right back down and continue to apply a little more pressure on it. So no, I, I didn't do it wrong. Uh, it's actually it's okay if it's backwards at this point. It's also okay if it's, if it's forward. Since it's a stencil, we can uh, flip it over and use it on either side. Uh, this actually came out pretty well. It's not perfect, uh, but what we can do is do a little touch-up on it. So what I'm doing here is uh, I've just taken some uh, uh, standard acrylic paint uh, from the local art supply store. Okay, so you can see here I've done a little extra touch-up. Uh, I've, I've basically kind of gone over all the areas around the sides uh, just to make sure it doesn't etch through any place. That'll kind of ensure that we, we get a good solid piece of metal at the end of this. Um, I've also trimmed down uh, the rest of the extra copper off the edges, so this is going to be the actual size of the uh, stencil at this point. Okay, for our next step, we're going to uh, spray paint the back of our stencil. 
Do do do. Okay, so uh, now we're gonna need to mix up some etchant. Um, I am using uh, sodium uh, parasulfate. Uh, you can get this at Fry's. I have also used uh, some other stuff that names escapes me right now, uh, but it's red, and you can get it from Radio Shack. Uh, one way or the other, I'm not going to get into great detail about uh, mixing the etchant and using the etchant uh, just because uh, it's potentially dangerous and uh, I would prefer that you go get the information from other sources more reliable than me and not Sue Spam Butcher when you uh, hurt yourself. Okay, so I've prepared a tub of etchant uh, according to the instructions uh, on the container. Uh, once again, uh, you'll want to follow whatever instructions are on the container of the etchant you're using. Um, Depending on how much uh, exposed area you have on your stencil, you may plausibly need to use more or less etchant or maybe even do uh, a secondary etching round. Uh, so let's go ahead and throw this guy in the etchant. And the important thing here is we're going to put it in slowly and we're going to put it in face down. That will, um, uh, that will ensure the copper precipitates uh, off of the, uh, the stencil. I'm going to poke this down. It's still floating here a bit. There we go. Okay, so we're all done with etching. And the reason we can tell we're all done with etching is note that uh, all the places that it was copper beforehand uh, has now turned black. And uh, what that is, is, we're actually seeing through to the other side. We are actually seeing the spray paint we put in the opposite side earlier. All we got to do now uh, is clean out that paint. And we can do it a couple different ways. Uh, you could probably use paint thinner on it. Uh, I like to use compressed air, uh, although I'm all out of cans of compressed air right now. Uh, I've got an air compressor out in the shop, so I'm going to take this out there and uh, see if I can blast that paint out of it. Note for one second, this is a very thin piece of copper, uh, and the etching just in general is, is somewhat fragile, so uh, proceed with caution. Uh, be, be gentle with it. Okay, full disclosure, uh, I tried using the air compressor and I blew the snot out of it. Uh, so what this means is I'm going to try, uh, going to try this whole thing again. Stand by. Okay, whole new stencil. Uh, I went through the whole process of uh, redoing everything after the incident with the, uh, uh, with the air compressor. Don't use an air compressor. Uh, it will blast it out. So I'm going to try doing this time is instead being very gentle and taking a paintbrush uh, and uh, some uh, uh, paint thinner, and uh, we're going to do it in a very controlled, slow, delicate fashion. Okay, so I'm pretty satisfied with how that came out. Uh, if you find these in little areas that uh, uh, didn't get fully etched out, you can take a dental pick and kind of scrape out them a bit. And if you have any holes, you can probably patch them up with super glue. So let's give this a shot.